Good Tuesday morning. Boomer out the rest of the week. That means that we've got Jerry and CeeLo again. Good morning, Jerry. How are you? Jay, what is up? How are you? I'm doing great. What's up? Is Eddie Scazzari is back. How about that? He How has returned. This? He is back from Iceland, and I remember the reason why I like this is all of us are here except for Boomer. Yeah. And last year, an executive walked into the studio when all of you guys were off, and I was the only one that was working, and said, how do you feel that everybody's taking off <laughs> but you? Does that make you feel <laughs> right. weird? Well, now we're all working and Boomer's not here, so I feel like the things have flipped. How do you feel, Boomer, huh? That's and right. we're all here, and you're not. I think he feels pretty good, actually. Yeah, he feels great. I'm sure he's having a great time. Yes. He texted me yesterday about something. You want to take a guess what it was? Uh, it's either going to be golf-related or dog-related. All right, so it's golf-related. Okay. What, what golf story did he text me about? I, and you know what's funny? No, not mine again. No, 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 okay. no, no. No, CeeLo actually nailed this before Boomer sent this text. He said if Boomer were here today, he would be talking about this. And then later in the day, Boomer sent me an article on that. Is it, I, I don't know. Is it about something live-related? Yes. Brooks Kepka oh. getting knocked out of the Ryder Cup standings, and now someone's going to have to make a decision if they put a live guy in the Ryder yes. Cup. He said, you're right. CeeLo he said loves that. Yesterday. that. Yes. He loves that drama. That's funny. But it was funny because CeeLo just, he just detected it. He just absolutely detected exactly where his mind was at. Boomer loves sending, <laughs> <laughs> loves sending the, uh, the articles. Yeah. So last week with the, we'll talk about the golf in a second. So last week with the, uh, with the groundhogs that I've been dealing with. Yeah. 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 And he was telling me I got to get a dog. Mm -hmm. He probably sent me 15 videos of dogs and articles about dogs. <laughs> He Which, loves that. I'm thinking about buying and getting a dog. I got to be honest. Now you're thinking about getting a dog? It's, uh, I got one shoulder telling me, don't do it, you idiot. And the other shoulder telling me, you got to do it. You Interesting. Don't. But you've got cats in the house. You got to get a dog that's, that's okay with the cats. why it would be. I've talked to Eddie. That's why it would be a golden retriever. Oh, okay. A little puppy <laughs> that supposedly Eddie tells me is the best breed for cats and dogs to get along. So that's it's what either I'm... that or a bichon <laughs> <laughs> So that's what we're contemplating right or now. Or a cavapoo-poo. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the ones. Uh, wow, you're thinking about getting a golden contemplating retriever. Contemplating it, yes. Man, oh man, I don't know. I just spent $3,000 getting things uh, fenced up and wires all over the place in the house because they were digging tunnels everywhere again. So yeah, But I gotta... is this golden retriever who you want to get along with cats going to kill these groundhogs Supposedly it keeps them away. They're scared of them. Oh, okay. They're scared of the golden retriever? That's what Eddie says. But That's what I've good read. Boys. <laughs> yes. I, I heard greyhounds work great. <laughs> I'm not getting your dog. <laughs> like, I don't want your dog. And they're no. hunters. They no, are hunters. No, no, no. And there's Julius on camera. If you're watching on TV. Yeah, Julius has no idea right now. You're thinking about getting a golden retriever. Poor Julius well, has been living the life. That's the reason why I haven't. They, the two of them have lived the life, and I don't want to screw things up on them. But again, I'm going to rely on Eddie if I do this, telling me how great it'll be. Yeah. And I don't want your dog, Al. <laughs> it will be great to have a dog, but you just what you don't want is the the, the fighting. And, the, I don't want to and then the cats start. Any of those male cats? Yeah, Julius. Okay, well, yeah, that's right, Julius. Duh. Uh, but uh, they, they do that spray thing when they mark their territory, and nothing smells worse than cat piss. Nothing. <laughs> when they, I'm serious. When they do that spray to mark their territory, nothing is Ugh. worse. And I grew up with cats, and then when it was weird because all these cats would show up at our house, mm -hmm. and just like that's how we got our cats when I was younger. They would just show up at the house and, and be your like, your mom took them in. We're here. And yeah. then they ended up being great pets. But anytime like a new one would come in, the other ones would have to mark the territory. And they would spray this spray, and it's not like normal pee. It's like this marking spray, and it is the worst. It would ruin stuff. I remember I had this backpack I liked. It was like right on there. <laughs> this thing stunk to high hell. It's up there with skunk. It really is. I've never, I have <laughs> never experienced this. It's so bad. <laughs> and you think like, how is this thing capable of making a liquid that smells this bad? So that's the defense mechanism. Yeah. Ugh. It's like, don't get over here. This is my stuff. Mm. And it's a different smell than their regular pee. Right, so. This side of the shoulder is growing now. Right. But I'm not sure that they would do that, but it's a possibility. You know, once the dog comes in, then all of a sudden, pss, 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 <laughs> no, I can't have that. Spraying all over everything. That I can't be doing. Yeah. But it's a, right now, it's a thought. I will say that. Okay. 
I mean, it's always a thought. You know, <laughs> like it always starts with a thought. It's a thought. And then you go back to, why did this thought even well, get in my head? and unfortunately for me, I've got Al in my head with the great regret in his life. He loves the dog. But yeah, yeah. am I wrong to say if you could go back and do that one again, you would not do it? Yeah, if I never met the dog or had the right. dog, yeah, no, I wouldn't do that again. Yeah. But then also, I mean, think about it. Al's in a different situation. You've got more people in the house. That. You've got you've got boys who can have a responsibility with it. So, I mean, it's a little bit different. But our house is at such a great time right now. Yeah, so then don't. There's your answer right there. I, don't, don't but add, I also yeah. can't have groundhogs tunneling near the foundation of the house. There's got to be another mm. solution other than getting a well, dog, right? Uh, there are. Can you borrow someone's golden retriever? I'm not borrowing anybody's dog. I mean, just have <laughs> them sniff <laughs> around and then, you know, mark its territory in the backyard. And then I'm the not, brown hogs will be like, uh-oh. I'm not borrowing anybody's dog. I do think what happened yesterday at our house should take care of it. We'll find out. Okay. And what happened yesterday again? Did you say They this put or? all these uh, oh, wire, wire barriers. Barriers, okay. All over where they were. And then they got tunnels they can get out, but they can't get back in. So supposedly they should vacate. Okay. We Go somewhere see. else. Terrorize somewhere else. You've got cool. lots of We've had issues. Yeah. Raccoons and groundhogs mm-hmm. and squirrels dead Field in your mice. pool. Field mice. Although that's gone away, but yes, we've like had... I've been to your home. You would think that you live somewhere in like straight up rural America. Yeah, it's in the weird. Woods. And there's no like, there's no creeks near us. Very strange. Yeah. Very I mean, strange. They somehow picked your place. Well... Yeah, it's the neighborhood. <laughs> what can <laughs> I, mean, I tell you? Do your I neighbors mean, have the same situation? Uh, I don't know. I don't really talk to them like you that. You don't talk to your neighbors? Not about that stuff, no. no what do you talk all. to them about? I don't know. Kids stuff, uh, party stuff. See, I feel like I would talk to my neighbors stuff. about the groundhog infestation. No, I'd be like, I mean, you have these groundhogs? My neighbor, Rich, I've talked to him about it. He hasn't really dealt with it too much. Yeah. The other people, much older people next to us on the other side, which okay. I think they're getting ready to sell, Sal. Just telling you if you're listening. Oh, really? Um, the neighbors across me, great, but I don't really talk to them very much. It's, you know. No, it was funny. I, I thought you were going to say the older people, and I thought you were going to say when you said, I think they're getting ready to. No, and I no, thought you were going to say no, die. No, I think they're getting no. ready to die, Sal. Sell. Sell. Oh, sell, okay. Sell. You know, because. The, What's wrong with you? <laughs> well, that's what people talk about in my neighborhood because, like, nobody ever leaves when they get into the neighborhood because generally it's young families sure. who want their kids to go through the Sayville School District. So they're not really leaving. And then they end up staying there because kids these days, they come back so and you're waiting for them at home. To die blah, blah, off. Blah. So there's a lot of people that you wait to die off. So, like, you know, <laughs> there's. Yeah, there's a lot of whispers that go on in the neighborhood, like, hey. <laughs> like this one over here. I mean, great life. It's time to go. That neighborhood sounds like an ABC primetime show on Sunday night. Oh, it's close. <laughs> the neighbors all talking about one another, which one's going to go, which one's not. Who's got the, the chairs, the Adirondack chairs? Oh, yeah. No, there's a lot of action going on there. <laughs> there is a lot of action. But those whispers happen. It's a real thing. Yeah, I guess if you're close with your neighbor, sure. I'm, I'm really, aside from my direct neighbor, I don't really talk to anybody. You don't, you don't talk to anybody. No, in it's, I don't know. I say we're in the backyard. I wave, say hello. But, I mean, conversation, not so much. I never did until I moved to this neighborhood. And now everybody knows everybody. And you just have you, you have your, uh, your your street parties and your yeah. block parties and your this and that. And, and Yeah, we had that a couple of years. I didn't go. You didn't go to your own block party? <laughs> I didn't. It was at the end of the block. Come on. Was it at the end of the people. block? How far is the block? <laughs> it's like down the block. Come on. <laughs> I didn't. You got to. You don't, actually. You got to go to your block party. <laughs> yeah. No, we didn't. Oh, man. Well, I think you should talk to your neighbors. Maybe maybe they did something in their yard to drive the <laughs> groundhogs to, me. to your yard. <laughs> you might be right. I maybe don't know. that's what's going on over there. I don't know. Uh, so anyway, Ooh. I have, uh, you know, obviously we talk about the Jets every single day. We got another Hard Knocks episode tonight. tonight. And and I have I, I, the feeling, well, let me ask you first, because I've got a very specific reaction that I'm getting from Jet fans right now that is that is not is not good. I think okay. it's a little bit coming to the, a little bit of this in the organization as well. But when you talk to Jet fans, mostly, what are what are the feelings about the season that you're getting back from them? Um cautious optimism. Very excited, worried about the bottom dropping out. That right there is what I'm talking about. Yeah, but worried I worried about it. I understand it though. I mean we've seen it before how many times. Like yeah. I you know, it's easy for us. You as a Viking fan, I'm a Cowboy fan. Al loves everybody from the 80s. Eddie's a, is a Dolphins fan. 
We've seen success. You haven't seen a Super Bowl, but you've seen good teams, and you've seen your team. Well, no, you haven't seen your team. And no, you've seen Heartbreak. Uh, no, you might qualify for this too, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we've seen teams win, and you sit there. It's it's easy for me to say, relax, everything's going to go great this year. A Jet fan should punch me in the face if I ever said that to them. <sighs> and and I brought up the Vinny thing from however many years ago that was. To 1999. That, 99. Yep. Like, th- that's the feeling I have for this Jet team now. Not the Vinny thing. Meaning going into the season, like, like this is it. This is their time. I remember that game. They were leading 10 nothing in Denver. The Parcells Jets. He's turning them around. And here we go. Vinny, they're going to win it this year. It's their season to lose. And the first god dang game. <laughs> They can't get out of it healthy, and the season took an immediate turn from there. Um, you can make that case that that's how this season feels. Again, not talking about the injury thing, about this is their season, and yes, there's good teams in the AFC, but hell, it's Aaron Rodgers. It's this great defense. Go win the damn thing. But then a Jet fan will say, okay, well, what about this? And what about that? And Rex was great. And two, We never win. I understand. I get it. I do. Until they see it, they're not going to believe it. Yeah, and I... <laughs> I've got an example of both ends of this okay. where I was wrong in the beginning to feel a certain way and then was justified in the end. So I don't know if the, if the jet season goes this way. I don't know if they'll be happy or pissed off, probably pissed off. But when Brett Favre went from the Jets to the Vikings, sure, I hated it. I said, okay, he had a he had an injury plague season towards the end with the Jets. Now this guy who I hated my entire life, a Packer quarterback, comes here. I think he's washed up at this point. He's done. He's just trying. He doesn't care about winning. He just wants to beat the Packers. He wants to go 2-0 against the Packers. He doesn't care if he wins any other games. So this is the feeling that I had. They go out. They're 12-4. and He has an MVP-type season. Dead wrong. One of his best seasons. Incredible. And I said, man, like I should have been more excited about this because all I was doing was waiting for the shoe to drop the entire time. It dropped. In the NFC Championship game. He got his ass kicked in that game. He did, too. and that was the Bounty Gate game and everything else. But, I mean, I have regret during that season not enjoying mm-hmm. the ride because I was waiting for it to happen. And then when it did in the title game, that's all I can remember now. Yeah. I, th- I do think it's different from the standpoint of a Jet fan has no. Um, hatred's not the right word, but ill feeling towards Aaron Rodgers. Right. Yeah, because sure. This isn't like Dan Marino coming to play for the Jets, I mean, yeah. which is very similar to what you're talking about. This is Aaron Rodgers switching leagues, new team, fresh outlook, and the Jets with a team that uh, started with their defense last year. Now you bring this major piece in. I don't think the Jet fan will have that feeling. Now waiting for the shoe to drop for injury or because it's the Jets, um, I feel bad that they might feel that way, but I understand it. But I don't think they would have the feeling like you would have, like, I can't stand this guy, but all right, throw another touchdown pass. All right, when's it going to end? Yeah. I don't think that's the type of feeling a Jet fan would have. But I, I am here to, and I, it's very tough for me to sit here and tell a fan base how to feel, but I'm just going to give you advice on this. Do not be negative until something negative so You happens. have to be, yeah. Don't be negative until you have to be. Because this, there's so few times where everything feels great with your team. And yes, they haven't played a game, and none of this means anything, and hard knocks and preseason, and none of it means a thing right now. But enjoy the hell out mm-hmm. of this. Enjoy it until you don't. And that is the only thing I will say, because it is a... It's very, very, it's tough to be a sports fan. It's tough to be a Jets fan. It's tough to be a Knicks fan. It's tough to be a Mets fan. It's just, it's just tough. And and going through it, and you've got all these horrible memories. And all I do is, is recall these bad moments over and over again, because that's all I think about. But right now, going into this season, if you're a Jets fan, you got to get rid of the Beningo gene for a little bit. You just have to. And that first game, on Monday night against the Bills, you can't be biting your fingernails. You can't have your knees knocking. You got to go in there expecting to win, and the Jets have to feel that way themselves. I I agree. However, I would say this to add to what you're what you're talking about. If they don't, if they get out to a shaky start, I know Aaron Rodgers the whole relax thing, but. I, that's what I would say, too, because you don't win. the. Yes, you can lose games in the beginning of a season that will impact where you are at the end. I get that. But I also know that if you are playing the right brand of football middle to the end of the season and you are a playoff team, that's what you need to be. 
Like, if you come out guns ablaze in the first game of the season, that doesn't mean you're winning this and you beat the Bills. That doesn't mean you're winning the Super Bowl. Same if you lose the first game. It doesn't mean you're losing the Super Bowl. Or it doesn't mean you're not making the playoffs. It's a very long season. We've seen teams, I mean, you look at the Bills last year. The way they started, the way they finished. That wasn't the same team. So it's a it's a very long climb. I agree with you. Enjoy the ride and don't be so doubtful. Fight against the doubt that years have told you is going to hit you at some point. Yeah, because Fight none it. of that has anything to do with what's going on now. And I know that I probably sound hypocritical with some of the teams, and I say it always happens with these teams, but really the truth is that nothing that has happened in the past with the Jets will have any impact on this season. This, to me, feels, it does, it feels different. And I think mostly because that defense, if it, if it is as advertised, as good as it's supposed to be, you can win with that alone. Now you add, I mean, you got skill players all over the place on this team. You just added Dalvin Cook. You've got a two-time MVP in recent memory in the last five years. He's won the MVP twice. He's motivated, which is a big part of this, too. The offensive line will be fine. This team should be really good. Yeah. Really and I, good. And I also think I know it's important to get the number one seed and the buy and as many home games as possible. And, you know, I was talking to a Jet fan who said, the thing that I just want first more than anything is to have a home playoff sure. game because we just don't have a lot of those. And I would just love to have a home playoff game. So that's the first thing I, to check off. I agree. And the home playoff game, for sure, I get that. The whole one seed, though, overdone. You don't have to have the number one seed anymore. It's been proven over yeah. and over. And over. Wild card teams win the Super Bowl now. It is not like it was in the night when we were growing up in the 80s where if you got that home field advantage – and home field throughout, we could pencil yourself into the championship game. And bar- it is, it's changed. It's not the same thing. Yeah, but then again, I could say last year the two teams that got the one seed went to. the That's Super fine. Bowl. If you want to run through it, the last several years, I'll find yeah. you wild card teams that won the Super Bowl. But right, exactly. I know. But just now, now there's just one. I understand. You know? I get it. There's only one. There are other people and players. We've done enough interviews. There are also players that will tell you that they'd prefer not to have the break. Yeah, to keep it rolling. But now, 17 games though, too. I understand. It's another. It's another I, reason I why. I totally get it. But the Jets is are they're they're a team that can travel now, and that's I'm not exactly. so worried about them on the road because I mean Aaron Rodgers has seen it all. He actually has not had a ton of success in at home games in the playoffs anyway. Think about that. Think about Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, a number one seed at home. Yeah. Losing. Yep. More than more than once. Yeah, I know. And he's got his his history in the postseason recently not great. Uh, but this is the best team that he's had in a very, very long time. Yep, agreed. On paper, that is. All right, Boomer and Geo with Jerry in for Boomer this morning. We will get CeeLo in here with his first update of the day. 